Hello and welcome to Career Ride. I am Nishant and once again I am here with a new topic. And my today's topic is basic C++ interview questions and answers in MCQ format. So without wasting time, let's get started now. All right, so let's start with the first one. Which of the following is a correct identifier in C++? And here we have the options. And the correct answer is option A. Now let us understand rules for identifiers in C++. An identifier can contain letters, digits, and underscores. It must begin with a letter or underscore. An identifier is case sensitive. It cannot contain any white space or special characters. Coming to the next one. Which of the following is not a type of constructor in C++? And the options we have. Default constructor, parameterized constructor, copy constructor, and return constructor. Now the correct answer is option D. That is return constructor. There are three types of constructors in C++ which are default, parameterized, and copy constructor. Return constructor is not a type of constructor in C++. Okay, so the next one is what is the value of A in the program below? And the options we have 4.5, 5, 4, compilation error. And the correct answer is option C, that is 4. Now since A is of integer data type, therefore type conversion takes place and the digits after the decimal are just neglected. So instead of 4.5, the accepted value is 4. Okay, so the next one is which of the following loops is best when we know the number of iterations? And the options we have while loop, do while, for loop, and all of the above. And the correct answer is option C, that is for loop. Yes, for loop is best to use when the number of iterations is known beforehand. Okay, so the next one is which of the following is scope resolution operator? And here we have the options. And the correct answer is option B. The scope resolution operator is represented as double colon symbol. And it is used to reference global variable or member function that is out of scope of class. Going to next one, what is the main difference between a class and a structure? And the options we have. A class contains both variables and functions, but a structure can contain variables only. The data items inside a structure are public by default, but inside a class are private by default. A class and a structure are not similar at all, and all of the above. But the correct one is option B. Structures and classes are very similar. The main difference between them is that data items in a class are private by default, whereas in a structure are public by default. Okay, so the next one is, what is data hiding? And the options we have, data are concealed within a class and with a private access specifier so that it prevents accidental accessing from outside the class. Databases are protected with different security measures to safeguard the data, both A and B, and none of them. And the correct one is option A. Yes, data heading is a key major of OOPS concept, where the data are concealed within a class with a private access specifier, and it protects programmers from honest mistakes. Okay, so the next is, which of the following is wrong about C++? And the options we have, data and functions are encapsulated together. Namespace is not available in C++. C++ is a superset of C and all of the above. And the correct answer is option B. Namespace is not available in C++. Yes, namespace is available in C++, but is not available in C.
Coming to next one, which of the following is true about the protected access specifier in C++? And the options we have can be accessed from outside the class, can be accessed only by the functions in the same class, cannot be accessed from outside the class but only from inherited classes, and none of the above. But the correct answer is option C, cannot be accessed from outside the class but only from inherited classes. Yes, protected access specifier cannot be accessed from outside the class and also cannot be accessed by the function in the same class. Now option A is about public access specifier. Option B is about private access specifier. And option C is about protected access specifier. Coming to next one, which of the following is a runtime polymorphism? And the options we have function overloading operator overloading, virtual functions, and none of the above. And the correct one is option C, virtual functions. Yes, a virtual function in the base class ensures that the function can be overridden when a pointer points to an object of the derived class. Thus, the virtual function actually falls under function overriding, which is a runtime polymorphism. Alright, so the next one is, which of the following features of C++ allow reusing of code? And the options we have, inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, and encapsulation. And the correct answer is option A, that is inheritance. Yes, inheritance is a process where the code that is written in the base class can be reused in the derived class. Okay, so the next one is, which of the following is default return value of the function in C++? And the options we have, int, float, double, and void. And the correct answer is option A, that is int. C++ uses int as the default return values for functions. And the next is, an inline function is expanded during which of the following? And the options we have compile time, run time at the beginning of the program, never expanded. And the correct answer is option A, that is compile time. Yes, inline functions are expanded while compiling the program. Okay, so the next question is, if class C is derived from class B, which is derived from class A, all through public inheritance, then a class C member function can access which of the following? And the options we have, protected and public data only in C and B, protected and public data only in C, private data in A and B, and protected data in A and B. And the correct answer is option D, that is protected data in A and B. Yes, protected data items cannot access from outside the class but only by inherited classes. Since class C is inherited from class B, which is also inherited from class A, therefore the member functions in class C can access protected data items in class B and class A. Okay, coming to the next one. In C++, dynamic memory allocation is accomplished with which operator? And the options we have, new, this, malloc, and delete. And the correct answer is option A, that is new. In C++, the new keyword is used to dynamically allocate memory to a variable. And the keyword delete is used to deallocate it. Okay, coming to the next one. Which of the following operator returns the address of the identifier? And here we have the options. And the correct one is option a that is ampersand yes ampersand returns the address of the identifier now the next one is which of the following header files is required for creating and reading data files and the options we have io stream f stream if stream and console.h and the correct one is option b that is f stream.h Yes, fstream.h header file is necessary for accessing files. 
Okay, so the next question is, which operator is used to define the member of a class externally? And here we have the options. And the correct one is option B. Yes, scope resolution operator is used to define the member outside a class. Coming to next one, what is an abstract class? And the options we have, a class with an abstract keyword. A class with no functions in it. A class with at least one pure virtual function. An empty class. And the correct answer is option C. A class with at least one pure virtual function. An abstract class provides an abstraction to the code and makes it reusable and extendable. It is designed to be used as a base class. It contains at least one pure virtual function that has no definition. And the class inheriting the abstract class provides a definition for the pure virtual function. Okay, so the next one is, can a function call itself in C++? And the options we have, yes, no, compilation error, and runtime error. And the correct one is option A, that is yes. A function calling itself is known as recursive function and this technique is known as recursion. Yes, in recursion, a function calls itself repeatedly until a certain condition is met. Okay, so the next is, can an abstract class be instantiated? And the answer is false. Abstract class cannot be instantiated. An abstract class is designed to be specifically used as a base class. And the next is, which of the following is the default access modifier for class member and member functions? And the options we have, private, public, protected, and needs to be assigned. And the correct answer is option A, that is private. In a class, the default access modifier for class member and member functions is private. Private members are hidden from the outside world. Okay, so the next is, what is shallow copy? And the options we have. A shallow copy creates a copy of the dynamically allocated objects too. A shallow copy just copies the values of the data as they are. A shallow copy creates a copy of the statically allocated objects too. And both B and C above. And the correct answer is option B. A shallow copy just copies the values of the data as they are. Shallow copy means creating a copy of an object by copying data of all variables of the original object. Okay, so now which of the following cannot be inherited from the base class? And the options we have, constructor, friend, both A and B cannot be inherited. Both A and B can be inherited. And the correct answer is option C, that is both A and B cannot be inherited. Yes, constructor cannot be inherited, but a derived class can call the constructor of the base class. In C++, friend is also not inherited. If a base class has a friend function, then the function does not become a friend of the derived class. Alright, so coming to the last one, which of the following is a valid destructor of the class name country? And here we have the options. And the correct answer is option D. Destructor has the same name as the class, prefixed with a tilt sign. Destructor is a type of special member function of a class. It is used to destroy the memory allocated by the constructor. And it is called automatically by the compiler when the object goes out of scope.